Okay, good. Whatever, whatever was happening isn't Go anymore. So All right, good morning, funny. everyone, or good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ocean Geographic Live. My name is Michael in Sydney, Australia. And we have Alex Rose in Chicago. And today we were speaking with Todd Mins in Canada somewhere. And we can't wait to this talk. He's going to share with us pictures of narwhals, polar bears, and his adventure across the Arctic, a 2,000 kilometers journey across the Arctic. Wow. Can't wait. Alex. It's going to be good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Todd. Um, I'm going to tell everybody a bit about you, and then we'll get right into it. So, everyone, uh, Todd is an accomplished explorer and international award-winning underwater photographer from Canada. He is a member of the Explorers Club, a fellow of the Royal Canadian Geographic Society, and a member of the Ocean Artists Society. Todd has been awarded Best of Show in the prestigious Nature's Best Smithsonian Oceans View competition. His images have been part of two exhibits in the Smithsonian Natural History Museum in Washington, D.C. In addition, they have been featured on the exhibit hall banners and promotions throughout the Smithsonian. Recently, Todd completed a 2,000-kilometer snowmobile trek through the Canadian Arctic, which I cannot wait to hear about, um, and apparently got stuck in some very serious whiteout conditions in Arctic blizzards uh, as they successfully traveled from Iqaluit on the southern, southern part of Baffin Island to Pond Inlet on Baffin Island's northern tip, an expedition that very few have accomplished. So... Looking forward to hearing about all of this. Thanks for being with us this evening, Todd. And well, I see you've got a grizzly bear behind you to start us off. Yeah, take close to the <laughs> bear, Mom. Um, ah. Yeah, I did that, uh, I think it was a year ago, a year and a half ago, wow. I was up there in the ocean. It's beautiful. Low tide, so yeah, I, I'm, as I think uh, was mentioned, I'm pretty uh, multitasked in the way I shoot. I started underwater shooting, uh, that's where I, kind of cut my teeth and then uh, just love shooting. So mm -hmm. you have to progress, you know, I can't be underwater all the time. So I progress above and where I am, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, Regina actually, and uh, probably about as far from the ocean oh. as you can be. And people always ask me, they're like, but you're an underwater photographer? Like, how's that work? And I, I said, well, actually, I, I probably credit my area for, developing my skill set because being so far away the we're doing lake dives mm -hmm. I actually dive mastered locally for about 10 years so every weekend I was out diving and the conditions are like no viz silt bottom yep. you know you gotta watch your fin kick so I'm a frog kicker now mm -hmm. like crazy and uh buoyancy control uh, is yep. like paramount so as a photographer I'm very keen on ensuring that I'm not damaging anything uh anywhere uh, hopefully leaving it better than when I left it if I can in mm -hmm. some situations. So uh, I think it's assisted me greatly in that aspect. And then from that, where I'm from, tying into the Arctic, um, we have winters here that are can be downright nasty. Uh, summers, we were, you know, uh, what were we, 30 Celsius today, I think. So wow. we can be plenty warm and hot. And be minus so if you want to factor in a wind chill we've been in the minus 60 minus 70 oh. range. <laughs> and it's even so worse than by me <laughs> yeah so in those conditions i got crazy and decided to get ice diving certified and uh, did yeah. some ice diving here and uh, that uh, as we'll see as we go forward served me well in the arctic uh diving under oh. ice in the ice up there so uh, um i think uh, i think i've got a uh, or anyway, maybe a short history, how I got started was uh, underwater shooting and everyone, you know, friends are always great at complimenting you on your images and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. You're my friend. So I entered a competition in San Francisco as a amateur and uh, thought great, entered it and friends happened to be there speaking. And uh, I got this call and picked up the phone one night. I remember I was in my basement in that first competition I'd entered and they're like, you won. And I was like, I won? What'd I win? And she says, <laughs> everything. You won everything. And I'm like, what do you mean everything? And she goes, first, second, third, honorable mention in macro, first, second, third, honorable mention wide angle. Oh. But she said, on top of that, you won best of show overall, not just the amateur category. 
So I figured I might be on to something here. <laughs> so I started entering a few more competitions, which is what led me into the Smithsonian. Um, I, a shot that was in the Smithsonian won three best of shows in competition. Wow. And That's uh, great. I was fortunate to have shot that with some um, uh, pretty amazing photographers in their own right, who certainly inspired a lot of people, David and, Dubalay and Jen Hayes, yeah. uh, they were the first ones to see that shot after me. So oh, cool. uh, kind of a neat, neat connection up with them. And they've been yeah. a, like great friends and great help throughout um, that development. Cause that's kind of it where I was starting into everything at that point. So neat. Yeah. They're always super supportive. Yeah. It's great. So cool. I, I know we've got some slides and yeah. uh, one of the things you mentioned, so I, I was asked uh, to, um, become a member of the Explorers Club, which I was extremely honored because uh, just when you look at the individuals that are part of that club, uh, you know, first um, first Everett Summit, first Man on the Moon, first South Pole, first North Pole, uh, those kind of things. And I was like, really? And I, to be honest, when I filled out the application, I, I really did it kind of quickly thinking, yeah, this isn't going to happen. <laughs> I just filled it out and sent it in and then I got I, I was accepted and the, uh, the, re the main reason that I was accepted is uh, some of the first slides that I've popped up uh, with regards to an encounter I had with bowhead whales in the Arctic. Yeah, and I'm going to put those up now so everyone can see that. I'm going to switch over to the PowerPoint. There we go. And here we have it. Oh, and there's you. Ha -ha. No. <laughs> oh, well, that looks warm. That's yeah, frosty. <laughs> Very yeah. refreshing, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, the Arctic water actually, because it's salt water, can go to about minus two mm -hmm. uh, below freezing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things like the exposed portions of my face right there. Uh, you have to pay attention to that yeah. uh, when you're diving up there um, or and or snorkeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of other aspects that are critical um, because the we're we're entering water from the flow edge and what the flow edge is is land fast ice um and mm -hmm. it's up against open water and the open water has pieces of ice that have since broken off and they're moving right it's the ocean there's currents yeah and so you have to pay attention when you're in there so that uh, some of the ice flows are not essentially coming up over top of you and blocking your exit mm -hmm. uh, a lot of unique aspects to to diving slash snorkeling up there, uh, but uh, it's pretty amazing. Although the spot I'm in right there, uh, it's about 3,000 feet of black water uh, below, um, but there were narwhal like crazy. But uh, we'll get to that in a bit, I guess. So um, definitely, I think the next slide. So this this is bowhead, and as you can see, it's it's shallow shallow water. So the bowhead's on the bottom. And then um, you can see the surface reflection and what we were cruising along. Uh, we were actually looking for polar bears. We were hoping to get in the water with polar bears and shoot them. And um, we'd come, we just finished getting out at a old uh, Scottish whaling hut. Okay. Just up at the pool. And uh, we'd gotten back to the boat and looking back and like, I swear I see some, some blows in the shallows and bowheads are a pelagic whale. Um, so we, we made our way that way and sure enough, there was a boat, uh, if memory serves me right, about 12 to 14 bowheads in the shallows. Wow. And so I couldn't uh, get into my dry suit fast enough to get into the water with them because <laughs> I mastered the second largest. And um, so we're going along shooting and this one in particular, I, I had a couple pass by, a mom with a calf, and then this one, it, it was coming at me and, uh, and I, I've included a short little video and I apologize for the GoPro video because it's on top of my underwater housing um, because I'm a, I, I'm a still shooter by trade. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, that image, the bowhead's coming along We're and I, I literally am thinking as it's coming, um, what is it doing? <laughs> <laughs> and is, is it gonna run me over because <laughs> They're massive and they're big. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't even shooting, like, you know, as a photographer, I'm not even shooting. That's how stunned I was. <laughs> Finally, I was like, just shoot. If it's going to run you over, it's get the shots and who knows. 
So this shot here, they shot from the boat, and that's me af just after that shot, and that's just the tip of the the whale's nose. It come up, but wow, it was swinging. I can still I still see it visually, and so it turned, and as it turned, they have a massive tail, and the tail was coming towards me, and I kind of I still remember kind of moving back from it as it came in, and as it swam swam past, I looked, and there's this black piece in the water it looked like a latex so i grabbed it oh. and i t took it out and what it was was a piece of the bowhead skin and whoa what the bullheads were doing is they were essentially uh, they call it like rock nosing so they were rubbing so orcas in bc oh. do that, that they have some known beaches mm -hmm. so the bullheads were rubbing and in doing that trying to slough the skin off and mm -hmm. following this encounter, we we're chatting with some scientists, I, th I think they were on the West Coast, and they were saying that, you know, they always assumed that they were doing this, but they never had any documented evidence of it. So mm. my understanding is I have the first documented proof uh, of them doing this rubbing behavior uh, in the shallows. Uh, and I still have the piece of skin, actually. I in a, kept it in a jar. Really? Yeah, so absolutely That's amazing. Cool. So I think that Next slide. Is the video. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. see this. Yeah. And if I, sometimes I kind of wish I might have been shooting. So if you look at the right hand side, you'll see it coming. It's on its, it's actually rubbing its back along Ooh. the bottom. And it's going to come up. And then you, you kind of, I think if you hear the volume, it, yeah. I just start shooting right here. And then that's kind of the shot where you, we saw, saw me sitting with it. My yeah. friends, you can see. How close it really was. Oh, look at that. And the tail sloped by, and then there's, you just caught a glimpse of the black bit in the water, but uh, yep. yeah. That's neat. Interestingly That's enough, neat. like in the number of Arctic trips I've done, which has been, I don't know, it's more than a dozen anyway expeditions. And in those expeditions, like this, this is summertime, so this is uh, late July, August. And the water I found in the dry suit was actually quite comfortable um, yeah. compared to pretty much every other trip I've done. Uh, but so interestingly enough, the true focus was to get in the water with polar bears mm. and shots of them in the water, like from below. And I ended up capturing this image. So uh, interesting enough. We can go to that one. Yeah. That's so, cool. So what this is, is so this is an, the, the portion that looks kind of like a dimpled um, bit of ice there on the golf ball. So that's the bottom of an iceberg that's mm -hmm. locked in the ice above, which is land fast ice, like the flow edge ice. And uh, we came through, there's a hole um, that was melted from the iceberg, the fresh water of the iceberg melting the salt water uh, ice. And we were able to drop through, it was a boat you're dropping through about 10 feet of ice and you're kind of trusting the whole, whole process because it's um, freshwater saltwater mix creates a halo climb. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a complete fog. Like you can't see anything. So you're dropping through 10 feet of ice in 3000 feet of water, trusting you're going to pop out under the ice um, and dive under this iceberg. And it was one of the most, uh, phenomenal dives I've done. The expedition company claims it's the best dive I've ever done, but um, <laughs> it's definitely up there. Um, and my dive buddy on this trip, he was, uh, I appreciate he was comfortable enough because we, we were on a line because we are in the ocean in currents and there's only one way out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him that if he, came, that if he could, was comfortable coming off the line so I could get some shots, I Basically, I guarantee him, I said, I will get you no matter what. Like, <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get yeah. You. Um, so he came off and added a unique element. And then we had the jellyfish to help me floating by at this point in time. Um, and some of these shots that I used, interestingly enough, not of the iceberg, but of uh, the flow edge ice when we were diving, you just never know when images are going to be used or where. And I got approached um, by a, a movie company they were doing a movie uh, with Drew Barrymore about the whales that were locked in the ice in Alaska. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember the movie. Yeah. Yep. 
changed names, so I always have trouble with the name. It was like Big Miracle that started, but then they changed it for at production. Oh yeah, yeah. The, right. the movie, the movie, the, the uh, production guys bought probably two dozen images of Under the Ice for their design work for that film. Oh. So I guess technically I've been in Hollywood movies, but uh, <laughs> pretty fancy. Better <laughs> side, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, That's very yeah. neat. Very cool shot. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I thought I'd better throw in a couple polar bears since uh, <laughs> the one post that went up on Facebook had them. Uh, this one here is, this one's special to me. This is my first polar bear um, in the Arctic, which is why I included it. Uh, it was my first assignment for Scuba Diving Magazine. I had a feature assignment and uh, writing and shooting, which was scary <laughs> into itself. Yeah, um, yeah. It was a really unique experience and a great learning experience, but um, challenging as it was, was that I was, the idea of that shoot was to go up and get shots of the narwhal underwater, and mm -hmm. that didn't happen. And I was panicked because <laughs> I thought that was going to be the end. Um, we did have narwhal on the surface, but we did not get conditions to allow them come close. But what I did have was these iceberg shots and that ended up being like the key feature to that story was two page mm -hmm. spread of the iceberg shots and we kind of pivoted a bit around it um this polar bear just to give you an idea of what it's like in the arctic this is usually may june when you go up when the ice is still um somewhat safe and mm -hmm. uh this is at about two in the morning because you have 24 hours of light up there so cool when you're out so it's just beautiful light too at night like it's sleep is just something you do when you're so tired that you actually just fall asleep as opposed to really <laughs> yeah. neat because there's just the light is crazy good at night mm -hmm. uh, if you hear things and um just such a soft light so i i think i included a couple other here I, I, yeah thanks to alex yeah. for working through this so oh yeah, yeah. sure it's gorgeous yeah. It's the same bear and you can kind of see there's some open water slightly behind it and that is kind of what it looks like in general from the flow edge going out in, in some situations. It gets to be some rough bits of ice uh, that mm -hmm. gets locked in to the ice. And a lot of times on points, uh, which I, I can kind of come back to or I'll circle back uh, when I did that 2000 kilometer expedition is that yeah. uh, those kind of pieces of ice and things like that, you're trying to pick your way through pulling a sled, a comatic with couple thousand pounds of gear on it um, and then making sure you're not going through any areas where there's weak ice open water you know being careful about those things too so yeah wow which, which part of the arctic is this uh so that the polar bears right there that's pond inlet so that's the okay. northern okay. okay bit of baffin island so that is above i think it's uh, 72 degrees it's the third most remote community in canada wow. uh, Resolute being the next, and then further to that is Greece Fjord, and I've been to all three of those. Right. Um, I, I should you know, mention Greece Fjord briefly too, is that, so that's on Ellesmere Island, and that's way up there. Uh, that's your hop off if you're gonna go do any trek right to the North Pole. Uh, we were up there, and they were having record setting temperatures when we were up. Like, oh. believe it or not, like 65 to 70 degrees and the ice was deteriorating fast, um, dangerously fast. We had one photographer actually slip through. Um, Ooh, and nice. on the way back to shore, I actually grabbed him from the back of the coat to pull him out. Um, but you know, global warming is the reality. Um, it is happening and it is affecting conditions up there. It's affecting the Inuit. They rely on this ice to hunt. They rely on hunting to feed their families and for food. Uh, it's subsistence hunting and so we need to pay attention to these things uh, because it is critical to their livelihood and to that area and the animals in that area uh, it truly affects things up there yeah. so well so this uh this polar bear this this was taken in uh kick a if you can spell it the first time you win a prize <laughs> uh there's three i think three cues in that um this bear was sleeping, came down to see us, and uh, 
we were in a boat. This was the same uh, shoot as a bowhead, and we pulled up to the shore, and the, the bear was right on the shore, and I was shooting, and I, I remember the, the guide saying to me, he's he says, Todd, how are we doing? And I said, I, I calmly, because I was at the bow of the boat, I said, well, the bear could jump from there to me, mm -hmm. so we might want to back up Just a, a little bit. bit. <laughs> Wow. But this is not, That's so this cool. is like just a slight crop. Mm -hmm. That's how close. So wow. it was pretty intense. This was a, and the reason I said that too, is this bear went from good bear to bad bear. Um, oh. You got to pay attention. The ears dropped. And so I knew that the bear had switched. Mm. Um, so anytime you're going to be close to any animal, you have to pay attention. Um, yeah. Cause you do not know what's going to happen and i've been as we were talking before we came on live i've been close to a lot of animals fortunately mm -hmm. uh, i love it but i always tell um sort of non-experienced people when i'm speaking at exhibits and things like that that that's not something you just do you don't just go out and get yeah. close to animals uh there's a lot of um sort of education and attention and um those kind of things when mm -hmm. you're doing it so mm -hmm. wow Look. See what we got next. Ooh, snack yeah. time. Yeah, dinner time, yeah. That's actually a narwhal carcass. Uh, oh. that it, so I thought we'd include that a little bit as a... <laughs> <'cause that's laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Fighting off the gulls. <laughs> yeah, they're in there for sure. <laughs> yeah. That guy came over to us uh, not too long after. Um, I get Honestly, I have to... I want to make sure I don't forget, but all these things I do, um, I can't do without the help of knowledgeable uh, Inuit First Nations guides. Uh, yeah. They are incredibly knowledgeable and talented, and I've learned so much from them. And in this situation, when that bear came over, you know, the guide's the first one standing there in front of everybody. And uh, I have huge yeah. respect for them, and I, I take it as a badge of honor that I've become friends with all of them after you know still on facebook or wherever um yeah. i really value their skill set and what they do uh, to allow me to get these images and help tell the story of the places i go definitely so. yeah couldn't do it without them no nope, absolutely not so mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's those fancy yellow fins again uh, <laughs> yeah you're very recognizable in those <laughs> well and you know what actually Circling back, that's why I got them was the dive conditions here were so terrible. I, I needed something when I do the frog kick so that students can could see uh, see me as they were following along. That's why it happened, <laughs> to be honest, actually. Um, but they are very noticeable, too. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it's my best side there, too. So, <laughs> There you In go. The there was a narwhal just doing a dive. And uh, so what's, what's occurred is we've come off the flow edge, which is behind me. And then that, all that ice you see out uh, in the background is drifting ice that moves in and out and wherever uh, throughout the current. So what's occurred here is this little pool of waters opened up. The narwhal up come in up to the edge because they, they're following the open water and they can make dives underneath the the flow edge down in search of food. Um, so this has provided this opportunity. And this was a successful expedition with Narwhal. Um, it is not always that case in terms of getting in the water with them. And this one was phenomenally successful because um, nice. I do know that there's not a lot of underwater shots of Narwhal uh, no. out there. Uh, I know uh, certainly Paul Nicklin has some amazing imagery of that. Yeah. And I've met Paul more than once because he's uh, lives in Canada mm -hmm. um, and have huge respect for the images he captures. But um, yeah. yeah, so Amazing. I think I've uh, included a few. It's difficult to kind of which one to include. So <laughs> well, they are the unicorn of the sea. And it's just crazy. They they never get less weird. Every time I see them, I'm just like, this makes no sense. <laughs> well, and so it's, cool. their, it's the left tooth. Yeah. Uh, of the male that spirals. Um, I have been fortunate enough to actually see a double tusk uh, whale. Oh, really? Uh, the, 
it's rare. Like the guides were going wow. ballistic when they saw it. It's rare. Um, so that was wow. pretty special to, to see that. And the, the Tusk, you know, they still, I think they're getting more information in terms of the use of them. And I think they, mm -hmm. you know, the things I've seen, they're checking the salinity of the water in terms of no the water safe or not they don't use right. it as a weapon is what i've i've read or seen um i've also seen that when they rub tusks it's a way of communicating um but it spirals you can kind of see the spiral in it um yeah. as it goes out and they you know i I'd like a lot of photographers like well, what's your favorite subject and i don't like to say that uh what is because i i usually what i say is whatever's in front of me mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my favorite mm -hmm. subject uh, but these guys are by far one of my top, top favorite things to shoot. I feel very fortunate to have been able to see them on more than one occasion. Uh, they're just so unique. They're only found up in that, that area. So uh, pretty special. Yeah, that's incredible. That's wow. <laughs> uh, a little tail shot there. Mm -hmm. uh, and a couple others in the background, you can kind of see the tusk. Um, yep. The, the tails are unique and uh, I guess a little um, story about the tail. So to me, the tails kind of look heart shaped when you look at the loop through the, yeah. um, like through it. So uh, my wife and I, we've been married for, it's coming up six years here, here in uh, oh. just over a week. I hope I don't forget. <laughs> we'll send you a <laughs> reminder. I, actually, uh, yeah, I don't know if it'll work to show, but uh, oh, I have yeah. a Narwhal on my ring oh that's and super cool there's five because we have a combined family of five kids so oh nice just sh i guess that shows you how much i like narwhal <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool i like that yeah that's and just cool. today my wife was saying that she's she hasn't been up to the arctic yet once ago she got she got certified as a diver uh, yeah. after meeting uh, um, and she's an excellent diver i actually have to admit and um That's great she wants to come up sometime and i think she'll we've got to find her narwhal since her ring has the same match to it so uh, required yep. <laughs> uh, in terms of the things i do and i quite honestly don't always tell her everything that goes on on these trips uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah <laughs> that's funny well now I, she'll know <laughs> might be watching, I'm not sure <laughs> I nice if, uh, Oh, so look at here, this. Uh, yeah, so we've actually, I've uh, walked out around onto that drifting ice. Uh, so there's a bit of the ice that's butted up. That's the flow edge. Uh, so we got the snowmobiles. The, that's the Inuit Comatic there uh, in the background. And normally we're on that side. But in this case, um, the guys are come from left to let me walk around on the drifting ice. Uh, for a brief bit and to capture some images, uh, which I just thought was kind of neat to get the the background of where we were with the whales in the foreground because um, they were just utilizing this pool. And you can kind of see the rippling, like they were just giving her in this little pool. Uh, the group, I think it was probably 20 at the time that were in wow. there. Yeah. Well, what a thing to see. Amazing. Mm. Uh, again, just a small pool. Uh, uh, water and they're checking us out like that's you can see the eye there on the one with the white um, yep. specking um, kind of thing so wow that is so cool oh and underwater too. this is underwater and this shot to me is pretty special because I was told that this female is pregnant oh wow yeah she, she and, is pretty uh, round <laughs> the shooting conditions were um, definitely challenging because the light, as you can see, is very low. Mm -hmm. um, it's black shooting down. Like we've got the one in the background looking up at me, kind of like belugas yeah. do really. Um, and I have seen them with belugas. I think they're, you know, fairly similar, you know, in terms of how they travel along. But yeah. uh, I did get shots underwater. And this, um, as most people on here, if they're underwater shooters would know. So I'm shooting a 15 millimeter fisheye lens with this shot. So we're, I was close. They were checking me out as they were going by, uh, which was just amazing. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure my I was grinning from uh, ear to ear as I was shooting these because it was incredible. Sure. Especially amazing. after having that, 
you know, the other expedition where I was get got shut out. So um, it's yeah. how it can be, right? Nature, it's not a zoo. So mm -hmm. you're you're investing the time and effort and hope in hope uh, to capture things like this. So that's amazing. What's the visibility like in in a shot like this? Um, not too bad, but the one thing I found about shooting the narwhal is that white produces this glow. Yes. So some of the ones down, there was like this halo of a glow and I was, you know, on post edit thinking, did is something up? Did you know, right. shoot something wrong? And it just is what it is. So it's just mm -hmm. part of the shot. I think it has to do with the water temperature. Interesting. Um, also, but in general, yeah. the visibility was very good. Like, you, you know, if you think back to that iceberg shot, mm -hmm. uh, the distance that you could maintain. The only issue is how much light there is if you're shooting down. Right. Um, I have shot um, mirrors in the water. They're diving. They're kind of, they're not, I don't think technically they're penguin, but there's, I think there's somewhat related. Hopefully there's right. no experts on here and frowning. <laughs> but, uh, Just they dive down and they're, they're pretty cool, but uh, they, they're, um, yeah, so the visibility can be quite good actually i found in the times i've been there um not crystal clear but i would say not uh not terrible by far that's great wow so cool Let's see oh wow that's close <laughs> yeah um i wasn't in the water <laughs> uh, these guys get my attention because mm -hmm. they are big and they can be nasty yeah. um i've heard of photographers videographers getting rammed and breaking ribs and um this one we were on the flow edge and when it came up and he scared the crap out of me because <laughs> <laughs> it came right up in front of us like right on the edge of we're standing right on the edge of ice and came right up and we didn't even recognize it was coming up and wow. uh check us out and they also have a great aroma <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah they yeah. are a bit stinky <laughs> i can always tell who's been around them right michael <laughs> i guess a diet of primarily shellfish doesn't make you smell great who'd have figured <laughs> yeah. uh, so. crazy such a neat picture though i love that and uh nothing prettier than ice i have to say yeah i had to th what i did is i i thought i'd put in you know uh when i was asked and to focus on the arctic I thought I'm going to try to give sort of a, a general overview. I can't go too much into it. So I didn't include things like Arctic wolves and musk ox and all these other things, yeah. but the icebergs and ice is just phenomenal. So and so what I did is I've included a couple slides and it's the same iceberg. And I, the only reason I included it is just to show something that I learned um, or was told by Jen and David Dubele uh, in shooting underwater was just to shoot from all different angles mm -hmm. and look after and that stuck with me and I owe them credit for that because it's in my mind always and so this iceberg that we were sh out shooting I shot it in uh, many different ways and I think it, as we come through some of these images you'll see it's the same iceberg but from different angles different oh, views wow. so this one oh. I added the kind of the mountain Escape behind mm. and show that it was quite a um, kind of moody early morning day. It was the fog up on the top. Um, mm. And then just the glistening of how that melt in the sun has turned this iceberg into this. Um, it looks metallic. It's just, yeah, yeah it was, amazing. It was it's like chrome. Great. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and you can see the same, you can still oh. see the same pieces, right? Which kind of shows yep, you it's the same, same pieces. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the sky is changing, right? Like you got to just keep thinking as things are going along that the conditions and the sky is always changing. The water is mm -hmm. changing. Now there's, you know, sometimes there's a little ripple, sometimes it's flat. Um, so just constantly, constantly working. Now, icebergs also can be dangerous because <laughs> yeah. they roll and flip and crash. Right. And I've had two crash where we've been extremely close to them. Uh, oh, wow which is, you got to be careful because, you know, two, at least two thirds of the iceberg is under the water. And mm -hmm. uh, the one shoot we were doing where it did crash, we technically 
while we were in the boat on the water, we were technically on the iceberg. Mm. Um, oh, wow. Crashed. Right. I was, you got to, I have a, prog I didn't include, but I got a progression of images as I'm, the boat is hammered and we're kind of speeding away from oh, it. Wow. In the wake and the crash of the ice and everything else. Cause there was a little waterfall coming off the one side, which is why we mm -hmm. went in so close. Mm. Um, so again, you know, that's, it's, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Oh. And then another slightly different angle. So, so yeah, cool. always playing around with the textures and angles and, uh, things like that. So in the sky behind, just the color, the Beautiful. gray. Oh, yeah. I always love those super dense veins through the ice that are like that oh. clear, crystal clear blue. Oh, it's just so pretty. Yeah, really the beautiful. blue. I didn't include shots. I did shots just of the veins. Yeah, uh, thing, I fully agree, Alex. I love that color wow. that they have made. And then if you can find like the one that I found where the sun was kind of behind and coming through oh. it a bit, there, it's just, you know, there's just the diversity <laughs> of things to do and shoot in the Arctic. It's just unbelievable, right? Like yeah. there's always something to shoot, always. Like the, yeah. the landscape, the icebergs, the animals, the people, the water, the, it's just nonstop. Amazing. Um, if you're willing to handle the conditions. For sure. Oh, it's such a great spot. Oh, so I'm thinking we're getting into the 2,000 kilometers trip now. <laughs> yeah, so I thought I'd include right. a map. I guess this is part of my proof. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't include shots of the speedometer, but I have shots of those too. But, uh, or odometer, I guess I should say, speed on right, the right. odometer. Uh, this was my um, uh, GPS tracking that I had running at different times. And so from the bottom portion, uh, it was a Callowit. And uh, mm -hmm. what happened was I did this trip in two legs. And the reason I did it in two legs was, um, I was booked to go to the Explorers Club ECAD annual dinner for the first time finally. Um, it's a good party. <laughs> I had tickets and I got asked to come on this. And so, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, uh, headed up and we started out from a Calouet and we went, I can't remember, call how many hours and we had to turn back for white oak conditions. White yeah. oak when you're on land is death because you cannot see anything. Um, mm -hmm. So we actually had to turn back to a Calouet. The next day we headed out again, um, started making our way and the, the conditions were still challenging and our guide on this first portion, uh, Luasi from uh, Pangerton, he is phenomenal um, snowmobile driver, and he actually flipped his sled because he couldn't didn't see the piece of ice at one point oh. over on this ice. track. We headed. We're kind of checking out some new areas, so we headed from McCallowit to the Cumberland Sound area. When we set up camp in a couple places, and we were picking through some areas there, so it wasn't the direct. Uh, hardcore straight line trip like the second portion and mm -hmm. what I was fortunate enough to see in this was um, some old whaling camps um, and uh, throughout this trip also some of the one of was one of the last outposts bef when the Inuit were forced into communities and one of the mm -hmm. last outposts that they existed at uh, the whaling camps basically is more the metal that's only left so it's not like you're seeing uh, other than the Scottish hut, which was made out of stone, the other camps, yeah. uh, it's just metal bits now. Like it's been, uh, I guess, what, about 100 years since whaling? Yeah, yeah. yes, that's about right. Yeah. Yep. So oh, wow. uh, I headed, yeah, I made it to Pangerton and then uh, flew to New York, flew home, made some change and flew back up and did the next leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so exciting. Yeah, so I, Let's, what do we got next? Did I include the, so there, Slightly just a little more detail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, the, you can kind of see the difference. So we're going over land and ice, uh, Cumberland Sound being a large piece of flat ice there. Um, and we're always looking for polar bears and tra tracks and whatever else we can see. Yeah. Then we got over to the second leg, which is, I guess when you're, it's kind of the lowest, uh, block on the far right. Uh, that's Kikatar okay. That's where the bowheads were in the mm -hmm. summer. So I've been there a few times. Beautiful community. 
Um, so in that trip, we we're going, there's routes so where you can kind of see the like little finger pieces. So we we're going over land, over ice, over land, over ice. And what made this trip grueling uh, um, was in many days, uh, it would, they were probably 16 hours on the sled. So basically, wow. you would go, you would uh, do your 16 hours, pulling a couple thousand pounds of gear behind. Uh, then you'd get to where you're going, you'd have to set up tents and camp, cook your food. Uh, during the day, most Thais all pretty much just ate a bit of trail mix and had some tea and a pea break yeah. kind of thing. We were running Those are behind. long days. Yeah, we were running behind because of the schedule. So it was day after day after day after day. So mm -hmm. most days were anywhere from two to 300 kilometers um, travel. Wow. Uh, just to give that into perspective, like the 2,000 kilometers, anyone that's in Canada, I guess, would be going from where I live over through Banff National Park, the mountains to Vancouver, um, yeah. essentially what I did. And the, the, it was interesting because the days that was felt like the Taj Mahal of luxury was when we'd come across one of the, um, the rangers' cabins that they've the Inuit have stationed out in various points for safety uh, because it meant we didn't have to put the tents up. We all piled into this little plywood shack and it just seemed like absolute luxury because you didn't have to go to the work of setting the tent up and then taking the tent down in the morning. Mm -hmm. You could get your nice. day going a little quicker. So it was just uh, a little bit of luxury that way. Um, it was challenging a lot of those points you know the I was talking earlier about the ice piling up in them and yeah. I ended up uh, I flipped my sled at one point um, I got thrown just because we were picking through the ice and my ski hit uh, a piece that I didn't see it was late in the day I was tired and it clicked it but that 2,000 pound sled kept shoving from behind so oh. it flipped right over and threw me uh, fortunately nice. yeah I didn't get hurt because we were definitely, definitely alone. could as you yeah. can see. So Ooh. I think I, uh, I've got a few shots um, to what I'm talking about. So this was uh, one of these little cabins we, we stopped at, and that's the snowmobiles and the Comatics and the gear behind. <clears throat> a little flatter topography in this section. This is um, lower, this is early in the trip. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Huh. Uh, so this was one of the boats we came across. One of the, this was one of those last outpost areas where you know, had been living out on the land, doing their things like they'd been doing for thousands of years. And I just found something about this boat just captivated me. Um, yeah. The Arctic scenery, I, I don't know, I just find it stunning. Um, it's a little flatter in this area. Um, further north you get, the mountain scenes are just uh, I think unparalleled. We, I was able, on the second leg of this trip, we went by um, Sam Ford Fjord, which is renowned. A lot of people have seen it by boat uh, if they do one of the Arctic cruises, which I have uh, have never not ever done. I've always done it being on the land. Um, mm -hmm. So I saw it from on the ice, which very few people have uh, in terms of uh, non-Inuit. And it's just phenomenally beautiful and stunning and honestly it's hard to capture like I shot a bunch of panoramic kind of shots but they don't translate well on the internet you, you have no. to see them in print or for sure to understand so wow yeah that is gorgeous <laughs> so this is a bit of the history so this is a whaler uh grave site uh, wow. that exists there's on one of our stops, so I just found it poignant to take this shot. Uh, I think it's it 1907. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the ship that this individual was on uh, when they were up there and where they were from, you know, just a simple, Amazing. simple grave site. Uh, and there were a couple there, so um, felt pretty special to be able to photograph these these things. That is, yeah, really beautiful. Oh. Well, that uh, looks cozy. Yeah, so this, uh, <laughs> the second portion, uh, we got stuck in a blizzard. Um, wow. yeah, we were about to hit land and we, our guide, knowledgeable guide said, we gotta stop, we can't get into land, we'll, we'll get lost. We gotta mm -hmm. set up camp quick. 
um, get things tied down. So as you can see, snow's already climbing up the tents, yeah. uh, carrying things in. We were holding down um, a cooking tent. It literally kept collapsing in and I was standing there holding it. And uh, um, we, <laughs> just because, uh, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm used to weather like this or something. I was just- <laughs> Probably <enjoying>. helps. <laughs> Yeah, we're standing on the edge of the cooking tent and we're trying to warm up our frozen stew and our guide and myself and one other uh, guide were standing there and we got the shotgun strapped across under the table in case bears are smelling our oh, food. Oh, jeez. And um, we started videoing a, uh, a cooking show, cooking with Jay and Todd. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he, um, as the tent kept collapsing down on top of us, uh, I think in the next slide or two, I've got a sh short iPhone shot of. Oh yeah, it is. There is one. Uh, yeah. Getting buried. Uh, we had to dig out the generator. Uh, we had to find it because it was buried under the snow. <laughs> oh man. Um, oh. Lot. That's the cooking. Uh, that's our fancy cooking tent. That is right that there. is some extravagant cooking going on there. Yes. <laughs> we had a time right there. Um, set up so it kept. Wow. Uh, Coming down, so yeah, just on the right was where we had the gun strapped around the table, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's something to be drinking. You're drinking glacier water a lot of times; it's been chipped away, so it's uh, mm. in that realm. And coffee that is nice. Yeah, yep, good supply of coffee. So glacial coffee water, very exciting. <laughs> uh, only to open up a place. <laughs> yeah, so this right. Is a iPhone video of the blizzard taking place. <laughs> oh boy! All right, let's see this. Hold on. There's, I know there's sound. There's sound, but there's the tents collapsed. <laughs> right oh there. my gosh. Um, oh. <laughs> there's me smiling away. <laughs> You're like, this is fine. Totally normal. Wow. Yeah, that was. Uh... And there's literally a band right in the background. Like it was, it, it, I, I remember when he finished the expedition, we got on like a Zoom call with the expedition company, the support team. Yeah. And, uh, I still remember first thing they said is, well, they all gave us a standing, uh, standing applause for completing it. And uh, they said, yeah, we knew only you could be in a blizzard and be grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, I actually, I did. It was pretty cool. Like you just, you know, I, awesome. if you're going to be a nature photographer, you got to roll with the punches. You got to have extreme patience. Yep. Um, it's, it's just everything and anything gets thrown at you and that's how it is. So, um, I tend to that's just so kind of cool. go with it. Sometimes you get a little tired and snippy, but, uh, <laughs> 16 hour days. And then that doesn't include setting up tent, taking tent down, eating like you're, you're not getting it. Yeah. 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 Did you, um, train and prep? How did you get prepared to do 16 hour days like that? Or well, actually riding active? Like that's, that's, uh, well, the riding I didn't. I've done some riding here for sure. Um, yeah. And can't really prepare for pulling that kind of gear behind. Like we'd snap no. a couple of bars just with the weight. Um, but uh, I, like uh, probably a lot of people, I work out quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I, actually, I credit, I always tell the gym, I credit them. Uh, and why I push so hard, I said, is because I do these things and they know. They've been to some of my solo exhibitions. They come and support me. Um, push me when I'm working out and don't let me slack yeah. off because you, you you have to physically be fit uh, yeah. to deal with these kind of things and the one badge of honor I did take from the snowmobile trip too is my guide knowing that I'd been up in Pond Inlet a few times at like our end point when yeah. we hit the flow edge uh, heading into Pond on, on our last day it was I said to him oh it'll be flat I know the route and he said it's about 70k in and he's okay, you lead us in. And uh, he let me lead oh. it. In. But I was like a horse to the bar and I put her down. I think we're 60, 70 K an hour that last leg. Cause it was about a 320 wow. kilometer day. Um, didn't include the, my, my face shot I do at the end of these. My wife always, don't show people that <laughs> kind of thing. Because I, I looked like I had been on a bender, uh, face wind burnt, uh, bearded growth, sunburned, tired. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it looked like I'd been picked up and mugshot and thrown in the <laughs> thrown in jail. 
kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's That's pretty, too funny. It's physically demanding, exhausting. Uh, yeah. Usually, I, I, honestly, to be honest, a lot of times I come back, I got to get either some physio or massage. Things are... Oh, uh, yeah. This is a, what, just a shot of inside the tent, just to show. We do have cots, and then yeah. the sleeping bags are wrapped in things, and we got everything hanging up top to dry out overnight. And Yeah. Uh, so, Looks pretty yeah. good. Well, yeah. yeah. Pretty comfortable. You know, considering. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of people in this. When we were in those shacks I was talking about, then we were pretty much shoulder to shoulder. Uh, yeah. The five of us, so. Crazy. <laughs> All right, no, crazy, see. crazy fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took this shot one morning, uh, and the only reason I included it, not because it's a blurry shot with my iPhone and fogged up, it's it, that green jacket. If yeah. you look at the next shot with my hat from Peru on, ah. there's that jacket in uh, New York in Rockefeller Center because we were at the ECAD, so I wanted to That's prove right. <laughs> there I was, and I'm wearing back my to hat. Back. <laughs> I've got my Pang, uh, my Pang hat that I bought in Pangerton. I, I, every trip I do up there, I try to buy something from the community to put something into that community. I don't, you know, you nice. can't just go take, you have to give back. So, you know, if I can support the art they're doing, I have a lot of carvings in my house. Um, some, one from even one of my guides. Uh, these Pang hats are known from Pangerton. They, you can buy, you can find them online. Yeah. They have a website and they're phenomenal for winter and I think they're, I think they look good. My wife is actually wearing a scarf from there uh, that I cool. got her. Love that. And I can't do these things without her support. So I had to That's throw right. it. Absolutely. So. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you look, uh, if you look at the right of this iceberg, there's, uh, that's our sleds, just to give you a little perspective oh. of the size of this one. So this is one that's wow. locked in ice. Um, actually, the reason we were stopped was we had broken uh, track on the snowmobile or a, a, dull, a wheel so we were having to do a repair in the field and thankfully we had what we needed to repair it because uh, again we're middle of nowhere <laughs> so yeah. oh for sure the things you see as you go you know it's just absolutely incredible yeah well I'm always this is kind of the classic problem with taking pictures in the arctic because the scale unless you have something next to it your brain just, just does not understand what it's looking at. It's like, is this a little iceberg the size of a couch? And they're like, no, it's the bigger than my house. You know? <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. it's just so hard to understand how big something is. So yeah, these are helpful pictures to have. Sure. Exactly right, Alex. It's the, there's the, the, like I was saying with Sam Ford Fjord, it's just impossible yeah. to convey that place and how special that place is. And we came yeah. in, that was one of our, to come back into land and go through up one of the frozen river beds. Um, it's yeah. just, you really have to get out there and see it now, not right now. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, like, you got to get out there and do these things. Yeah. Like, just do it local. Like there's so many things wherever everybody is. Uh, it's a great way to uh, physically distance. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. for sure. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Uh, Physically distancing. Nature photographers have been doing it for years. That's right. We were doing it way before it was cool. <laughs> That's fun. Oof. This is, uh, so playing around with the light. So this was the, actually, I'd just been thrown from the snowmobile. Oh. <laughs> it was this late in the day. Uh, so those are actually mountains in the background. But the way the light would drop and the blue it put onto everything, mm. I just thought, amazing and even at the end of 16 hours on a sled I still had to think about getting up and shooting or getting off the sled and yeah. walking uh, <laughs> and shooting this because I was just in awe it never ends <laughs> from before with that iceberg um, like kind of to the now with this so so cool I love that <laughs> this uh, friend <laughs> It's me in the black. <laughs> this was the, and the little pyramid peaks behind, or you can see them from Pond Inlet. So we did a quick stop and did a, we made it kind of thing. So I apologize for, I guess she's in focus. So, and then she's taking the shot. So that's good. <laughs> but uh, a great, great group on this trip. Actually, I have to admit uh, the man in the orange is Australian, uh, older gentleman, great guy, our guide on the right, uh, Jay. And uh, my two friends there who, uh, this was uh, one of the trips. Now they're actually engaged. <laughs> they weren't. Oh, cool. <laughs> so there you 
you go. Nice. Maybe you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh, so, so beautiful. Like scenery, it's just oh. absolutely incredible as yeah. you go along. This is sitting, looking back from the flow edge. This is Bylet Island. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I always hope that I can capture the essence of what's going on when I'm in these places, like the, yeah. the light and the beauty of what there is. There's just so much to photograph. Yeah, that's so pretty. Oh. So this iceberg, um, so you can see the flat calm. The, the, I included this because that piece on the right, uh, the high piece, mm -hmm. cracked while we were there. Oh, wow. It came down and it, that, to give you a perspective, it looks pretty tall and it was. I would say that that's about a five story piece that broke off from the flat of the top of the iceberg to the wow. top of it and came down. You can kind of see some cracking in it. Uh, fortunately, mm -hmm. we were a little bit away when it happened, um, but it did break the silence of the morning. But just, I yeah. actually love the mood of the morning, you know, with the way the low cloud is. Um, mm -hmm. that same low cloud also can affect you when you're trying to travel in the Arctic and planes can't get in and out potentially for visibility. Um, I always say to people like flights in the Arctic are always 50, 50. Um, oh, yeah. if you don't miss one due to weather going up, you're probably going to miss one coming back down. So you need to be flexible. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's how it works. Um, it's the way the weather works up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is a beautiful one. Thank you. Uh, uh, this last slide yeah. uh, is in Pond Inlet. Um, I thought I'd include one of uh, Inuit to he dressed up. I think he's actually been in some movies, uh, but just, oh, cool. I just love the way the light was captured. And they were doing a presentation to us drumming and some of the um, Arctic games that they do. And so he, he was gracious enough to come outside and let us photograph him uh, with the mountains in the background. And it's one of my favorite shots that I've shot of uh, the Inuit up there actually. Uh, so I thought, I think this is the last one that I slide that it I is. thought. It is, yeah. Yeah. That's fabulous. Oh, so wow. cool. I thought that was mesmerizing. As I was saying, yeah. the Arctic and the Antarctic have, have sort of a way to, like a magnet, they just draw you back in again and again and again. So when will yeah. be our next trip? Ah, well, it, it's probably <laughs> going to be local to Grasslands National Park, uh, Friday. Oh, nice. Uh, shoot the uh, purring owls, pronghorn. Oh, the uh, owls are so cute. <laughs> yeah, they're they're different than the Florida ones, I find. Um, yeah. They're really hard to get close to. But the little ones oh. are coming out right now. It's, I'm right. fortunate. I, I think of it like a grassland safari. It's about three hours away. And uh, I tend to go there once or twice a year to shoot. Um, I find shooting local, you know, keeps me sane uh, when mm -hmm. I can't get out. So. Uh, other places but it's it's a truly special place it's just it's a uh, dark sky preserve noise also so if you ever want to get away from any noise or uh, light yeah. it's a place you can do that and I've gotten to know the area well so I know where to find pheasant and uh, <laughs> a lack for the grouse I'm not a, a birder per se but I'm learning a heck of a lot <laughs> being out there uh, and you just never know what you'll what you'll find when you go out uh, last year I went to the east block there's two blocks of it and it's pretty badlands lake and uh, stumbled nice. across a dinosaur dig. They were in the middle of doing a dig, so I actually have some shots of the, the rib bone of a dinosaur that they were just unveiling because the oh. largest T-Rex is on display here and was found here in Saskatchewan on display here in Saskatchewan at the Royal Saskatchewan Museum. Uh, just unveiled not that long ago, a year ago, I think, a year and a half ago. Oh, wow. uh, so it is a pretty special place for dinosaurs too, although photographically that's not a doesn't work that well, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, there's neat things. The grasslands, you'll find some um, teepee rings and things like that from uh, uh, people from the, uh, in the past in the areas that they, you know, say were running uh, buffalo and bison off uh, cliffs wow. and arrowheads and things like that. So that is on the menu. I, I guess fortunately in Feb uh, end of February, I just got back from Uganda shooting um, silverback mountain gorillas. Oh, wow. And, uh, so I think that's helping keep me sane uh, that I had that experience just before everything kind of got shut down. Um, 
was supposed to go to the Philippines, go diving again mm. to Anilao, and I'm pretty confident that that will be might be my first place back to get okay. in the water again. So we're able to travel one more time. I think that's a pretty special place for shooting. So, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. but Canada's oh. so lucky. Yeah, yeah, you have Canada. so much to see there. Oh, so nice. Very right. cool. Um, Thank you so much again, Todd. Thank you so much for, for being here with us. And uh, I look forward to sharing the Scotch review soon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got, you got, no you got no having Scotch, Scotch without me, you two. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I don't. I think you can't be an explorer unless you actually uh, drink Scotch. I think that's... Exactly. Uh, I don't think you can trust an explorer who doesn't drink Scotch. It worries me. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think that's a good idea. It's, uh, yeah, I agree. No, it was yeah. great. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, it was difficult to narrow down a few things because there's quite a few things that For I could sure. have touched on, but I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for coming in and uh, join us next time on Ocean Geographic Live. Bye bye. <laughs>